So let's get cracking with our new activities. There, there were quite a lot of requests last week for very different things. So today we're going to do an activity, di activity digest of a lot of different themes, different types of activities. Sometimes it's automate, sometimes it's speaking. And we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different topics. Some are low level, some are higher level, things like that. All right? All right, okay. All right. I thought we'd start with the uh, uh, beginning of year kind of things because there were quite a lot. So you see fine, like I, I'm scrolling down, you see, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, the activity is going down. Perfect, okay. okay. So <clears throat> I'd like to start, yes, we got quite a lot of uh, uh, requests for automate activities for topics that come up at low level at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, right now you can see the latest one we've uh, uploaded. <clears throat> they're, they're for present continuous, speed unscrambled. Do you remember speed unscrambled type activities, yeah? Mm, not really. <laughs> Look, I'm opening one. Well, the instructions are right here. There's also a video instruction. Tom made a video. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. So, <clears throat> You see the procedure. The, the, the students first, they have sentences or questions to unscramble on their own. So that's fine. The first step is a one-on-one um, uh, a, a -on -one thing. Students unscramble the sentences or questions. Mm -hmm. And then student A folds the paper so that only the scrambled sentences are visible. And that's how they're going to race each other, things like that. So check it out. I'm going to open the first one here. So mm -hmm. you, can, you can use this as a kind of P1 because when the students are alone unscrambling the words, here's just a regular P1. You're just, uh, you're just testing, uh, uh, you're just checking that they're, you're checking their understanding. You're checking that we're on the same page. So raining it is, is it raining? My neighbors are singing. I am now studying. Da, da, da. He's not working now. Are you listening to me? And is our teacher standing up? Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It's not very difficult. This is just basic present continuous sentences at A0, A1 level. The vocabulary, they should know this vocabulary. And it shouldn't awaken their system too. Remember their logic? Yes. When yes. they ask, ah, teacher, why, why, why? Here, we're not make, waking up their logic. We're just confirming the rules that they saw. And then what they can do is simply fold the piece of paper so that they don't see the right answer anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're going to then speed unscramble the sentences. So it, it, it works like this, for example. <clears throat> I read the sentences and you have to quickly unscramble them, for example. So I would say, Olga, raining it is? Mm -hmm. Is it raining? Exactly. Are singing neighbors by? Are my neighbors singing? You made it into a question. All right. Okay. Um, my neighbors are singing. It, it, it really depends on what you want to play with with your students, but yes, uh, <laughs> depending on yeah, the. But they don't see uh, so their uh, marks. Exactly. So this is where your students, even at low level, can practice on can practice their intonation. Did you hear how I asked you how I said the first one? I went raining it is mm -hmm. to show you that it's a question, and so the students can have fun with that as well. Mm -hmm. But that is really up to you. You can start it at first where positive, uh, where sentence or question doesn't matter, and then as the students get it, you mm -hmm. remember this whole idea of. When you're automating, you want to just start simple and gradually build up in difficulty. Yes. So at first you do it simple way. It doesn't matter whether they make a sentence or a question out of it. And then when they're getting the hang of it, they're doing it fast. You tell them, okay, extra challenge. Now the other student should understand from the intonation, whether you want to make it a sentence, uh, a question or not. Uh huh. So maybe we can just say uh, affirmative or negative or didn't question. 
it's it's better with intonation because they'll practice recognizing question intonation. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, I can tell you, I can tell you, for example, are singing neighbors my, and here it's flat intonation, so you should just say my neighbors are singing. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you, are singing neighbors my, you should naturally go, are my neighbors, uh, blah, are my neighbors singing, and you go up in intonation. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It's clear. It's clear. Uh -huh. of course. So <clears throat> whenever you see the, the, the a title speed unscramble, that is basically the general procedure of speed unscramble. First, they do it slowly on their own, then they fold, and then they race each other. Who can do it fastest? Mm -hmm. And you'll see that you'll have speed unscrambles for present continuous at different levels, different numbers. And their speed and scrambles, I'll just show you very quickly. You see to be in present and past. Mm -hmm. Similar thing. There we go. To be. Not to be. Yes, to be or not to be. Here it's both present and past. There are other speed and scrambles that are only be in present, for example. Um, here we're assuming that they've already done B in present, they've already done B in past, and now you're trying to automate both. So you see it works the same. Home last you at were night, were you at home last night? Hot it yesterday was, was it hot yesterday? It, it today hot is, is it today, is it today hot? Is it hot today? It's challenging, it's fun. Yeah. Clear on speed on scramble, right? Right. Right? The same thing with to be as with present continuous. You can first do it in a simple manner without uh, uh, playing on intonation. And then you introduce intonations. And you tell the students they don't have to, they don't have to stick to this uh, intonation. They can surprise each other. So they can change one to make it a sentence and keep two as a question, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about, speed unscrambles, because we got a lot of requests for the speed unscrambles. And let's go directly to King of the Mountain, because there's one right here as well, a new one. So again, for uh, you asked for a lot of automate activities for these things that come up at A1, A2 level at the beginning of the school year. Here's one with to be, King of the Mountain. So it's another way to automate to be. Remember King of the Mountain with conditionals? Yes. Yes. Works exactly. It works exactly the same way. So mm -hmm. you can do it a first time slowly so that the students, but that's just a P1. And then you challenge them with time. In, in 10 mm -hmm. seconds, how many can you do? Okay. So you, you get up the timer. How, mu how much time are we going to give each other? Okay. Okay, let's do 20 seconds, okay? I'm gonna do 20 seconds, as many as I can. I don't read them first. Ready, steady, go. That restaurant yesterday was very good. Are you busy right now? Was it, was yesterday your birthday? Today's my birthday, the printer's broken now. Are Sally and Sam in the restaurant, were Sally and Sam in the restaurant with you last Friday? Last Tuesday, I was at the gym. On Tuesdays, I'm at the gym. You're a student, the neighbors were loud last night. They, 11. No, 10. I did 10 in 20 seconds. Okay. All right. You can absolutely, you can absolutely challenge yourself. How many do you think uh, you'll do in 20 seconds? Try to beat my 10, okay? okay. You can do it. That, that's the brilliant thing about P2 activities is that there's no right answer. There, there's not a right time. Uh, a right amount of time to do this in. It really, it depends on people. So you might be able to do more than 10 in 20 seconds. Uh -huh. I won't get offended, don't worry. <laughs> All right, test yourself. Try to do it in 20 seconds. Let me know if you do more. Okay, so shall okay. we right now or what? No, don't worry, we, we'll, we'll, we'll go over. Our objective right now is teaching, pre preparing for our students. So we'll focus on that. 
but yeah, if you have time, <laughs> give it a shot. It'll be fun. It'll be interesting. So there are a few King of the Mountains like that for to be in present, to be in past. Those are, yes, those were the first questions I wanted to answer. Speed on scramble for present continuous, speed on scramble for to be, King of the Mountain for to be. All right. Now, there were more topics that come up at the beginning of the year at low levels that we were asked to make materials for. I'll start with, where's the email? So you see here you have be in present, speed and scramble, king of the mountain. No, I missed it. Oh, I'm gonna deselect the grammar. Not everything is grammar here. I'm deselect grammar and I'm gonna type emails. There we go. But we've put, we've put together a short P2 activities where students are going to dictate emails to each other. So this is the first thing we were asked to, this is very basically for alphabet, for numbers, for basic spelling. If, if, uh, uh, if you need to do that, this activity basically, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's made to push students <clears throat> to, 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 to write down as quickly as possible. Okay, what they hear. So we're gonna play with emails for that. Let me show you. It comes with uh, the email cards. There you go, you have different email cards mm -hmm. that the students are going to dictate to each other basically. We've put it in small card formats, but also in large email card formats if you need to put them on the board or things like that. Small email is for like, if there's small groups, large email cards, if you need to put it on the board, things like that. And look, there, there are actually quite a lot of different kinds of races uh, you can do to push the students to write these down as fast as they can. So the first one, quite typical is a board race. You split the class into two teams. You have one member from each team come to the board. You read off one of the emails Mm -hmm. Whoever writes the email first on the board gets a point for his or her team. And then it's next player, next player. Clear? So uh, one person reads the email and the other is writing it or what? In, in this case, in the board race, the teacher is reading the email. Yes. And the student is writing it. Yes. You have two students at the board, one from each team. Mm -hmm. And they write the email on the board. The first to finish gets a point for his or her team. Uh -huh. okay. And then next two students. Mm -hmm. Next two students. It's a board race between two teams in the class. Uh -huh. Okay, and just in order to practice writing. To practice, to practice quickly understanding spelling. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Now, you can also do... <clears throat> relay races that's a lot of fun it's not on the board and you can put the students in smaller groups so you split the class into small teams of groups of three or four and <clears throat> what you're going to do you invite two teams at the front of the class you put down a card one team member reads the card while another writes it so it's really here uh, all about speed listening and writing exactly what you hear Mm -hmm. it, it, it helps the students make direct connection between what they hear and the English letters. Yes, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just to make spelling automatic. So students cycle through writing and getting a new card. It's like a relay. Mm You can, you can do this in different ways. You can also do info gap. Student A takes a card, says the email, student B writes down the number, and they check to see that they're right. Mm -hmm. 
and then next card, next card, next card. This is the most typical uh, uh, card flip, basically, that we do with cards. Just add the time to challenge them to do it faster. So what do you mean uh, student B writes down the number, number of for what? Sorry, the email, the email. Uh -huh. So the same, just uh, students. Yes, here is just in pairs, basically. Okay. In pairs, you see, there, there, there's less competition with other groups, so you can add the timer, and that will engage your students. Yes, okay, it's clear. It's, there's a, a, a last fun one that, is, that we call everybody's right. So here, each, single, each student in the class needs a small board or a piece of scrap paper to write on. Mm -hmm. Because here, what you're going to do, every, all the students are on their own. You as the teacher, you read an email from one of the cards, and all the students try to write down the email that you dictate and hold up the board when they're done. And here you can either do the first one to do it gets a point, or when everyone in the class is correct, you go to the next email. So they have to help each other out. Mm -hmm. And here again, you can give the class a, a, a time goal. So for example, how many emails can we do in two minutes? Okay, a kind of happy letter or what? Sorry? I don't know. So uh, I'm thinking about motivation and uh, I don't know, happy mail or something like that, maybe. You're thinking of motivation, uh, yes. motivating <laughs> students to do it faster. Or uh, faster, yes, and uh, maybe, I don't know, to give the context. Uh, I like to uh, to give the concept, context for the task. Oh, this is, this is a, uh, remember, this is a P2 activity. Uh -huh. So the, the context, it depends on the context of your lesson. Yes. I, I, I agree, you need P2 activities. Sometimes there's no context. Sometimes it's really just drilling. Uh, you, you, this would take, these would be a few races that would take about five minutes of your lesson. Okay. Maximum, I agree with you. This is not, this is not like a, a kind of big project that I've presented before where the students have some creativity involved, where they, they actually have a, an end result that mm -hmm. motivates them. You're absolutely right. If you do this for more than five minutes, the students are going to get tired. I would say 10 minutes maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Fully agree. Th these are P2 activities. So that's for, for example, for spelling. But look, we've added, uh, let me reset. We don't want to see the emails anymore. Let me show you. Okay, I'll just filter by date created, it will be faster. It's not easy on this different device. Next time, next time, definitely have the laptop repaired. So look, date created. Come on. There we go. So I'm, I'm going to show you, for example, these are going to be more P2 activities. You'll see that uh, sometimes there's a bit more context. Okay, look, for example, this one. So we were also there, uh, 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 I, think, I think it was about like 25 teachers asked me specifically about uh, automating possessive adjectives. Mm -hmm. Mine, yours, things like that. Um, so we put together this activity again. The context, there's very little context here. It's a quick game where students are going to repeat a dialogue. Now, I'm gonna show you, you can, you can extend it in a fun way, but the basic drilling at the beginning is very simply, the conversations are these. Students are going to either do conversation one or conversation two. Mm -hmm. Is this your mm -mm -mm? Yes, it's my mm -mm -mm. Oh, no, uh -uh. It's not your mm -mm -mm. it's my mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Or the opposite. Is this your mm -mm? No, it's not my mm -mm -mm. Yes, it is your mm -mm -mm. No, come on, it's not my mm -mm -mm. This is This is basic drilling, basically. And your item cards, you have all these different item cards. So you cut them out in cards, and students, 
They're in a stack and students one by one take it out. The first one, friend. Is this your friend? No. <laughs> he isn't. Are you talking about me? So you say no, it <laughs> no, isn't your guy. friend. Yes. And I, I the picture. Ah, the guy in the picture. Yes. Oh, he, look, he looks very friendly. Come on. <laughs> Maybe so I, a little bit tired. So I insist. I say, yes, it is your friend. And you go, no, 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 Antoine. It's not my friend. So this would be for a basic P2 activity, basically. You cut out all these cards into a stack, into a pile of cards, and student card after card, they just repeat that dialogue. Uh huh, yes. Okay. Now, you're absolutely right. Sometimes P2 activities, you can add a twist to them. I like following up, I like following up this P2 activity, is this your? With a, uh, an activity, have you got my? Uh -huh. So imagine this, imagine this, we're, we're all together in class and we were all paired together in pairs, right? For the P2 activity, at first, we were all in pairs, student A, student B, and we had one stack of cards. Yes. Now, at the end of this activity, is this yours? I would ask my students to write their name on each card. Mm -hmm. So student A writes their name of, on half of these cards, student B writes their name on half of these cards. Mm -hmm. And then we shuffle them all the cards in the class, you gather all the cards in class, you shuffle them, and then you redistribute them. So there will be more than one friend card, but on each friend card, there will be the name of somebody in the class. And I need to find all my original cards. So I'll go up to you, Olga, and I'll, Olga, have, have you got my friend? And goes, no, no, sorry, I haven't got your friend. I've got Anna's friend, but I haven't got your friend. Okay, okay, well, Anna, have you got my friend? Uh -huh. Anna said, and so I'll go around the classroom trying to retrieve all my cards and trying to give back all the cards that I have to their original owners. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Does it make sense? Yes. The original, the original, is this your P2 activity? You'll automate very quickly. Again, it'll last for five, maybe 10 minutes maximum. And the students just go over the same typical com uh, conversation, just they're automating the possessives. And then you expand to have you got, and here the students have a bit more speaking practice and they can challenge and ask each other questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, Antoine, and are students writing uh, all the names uh, of children in the class? You only, so look, for example, these are our cards. Mm -hmm. And I, we will write the name of my name, Antoine, on six of them, and we'll write your name on six other cards. Yes. So only one name per card. Okay. And we give all the cards to all the students. Yes. All, yes. Okay. It depends how much time you have for that activity, because that can take a while. Especially with the money card. I've, I've had students that have had lo loads of fun with the money card. They change the name on it and things like that. Mm -hmm. it, it's funny. Have you got my money? They go, no, 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 Antoine, I haven't got your money. Mm -hmm. But it's my name on the money card. No, 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 I changed it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see. Again, I find all these little improvisations that students can do if they can do them. Uh, there's no reason to not reward them. It, it depends really what we're preparing for. If we're preparing for real life, well, real life, in real life, you're rewarded for taking risks, for trying something new. Yeah. Uh, if you're preparing the students for an exam, no risk taking. Most exams do not reward uh, risk taking. Yes. I think we agree on that. If it's exam preparation, guys, no risk taking, just follow. Uh, we have something similar, so alphabet and numbers, clear, possessives, we've done it. 
And again, to finish on P2 activities for today, this is the last one that we were really uh, uh, requested. Ordinal numbers, you know, first, second, third, oh, fourth, yeah. etc. Uh, we had a few teachers asking us for P2 activities for that. So I, I really like this. It's quite basic. Um, we give all the, no uh, all the cards of the uh, cardinal numbers, the original numbers, and very simply, you can have, so it depends how far you want to go, but each group needs a stack of number cards. And so if, if, if you're starting with the, 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 the basic ordinal numbers, it's very simple. You flip a number and you say the ordinal number, okay? Mm -hmm. Second, eighth, seventh, fourth, first. Okay, okay, good job. <clears throat> then, remember the whole idea, the, the, the brilliance of P2 activities of, of automate, uh, if, if you wanna successfully automate the skills, you start slow, you start easy, and you build up in difficulty. So then what you can start doing is asking them to flip two cards, put them next to each other, and say the ordinal number. Mm -hmm. So if I take a four and a two, well, it depends in which order I put them, but it can either be 24th or 42nd. Mm -hmm. All right? Boom. Eight, six, 86, 68. You can, you can have students as well add the numbers together. Boom, eight, six, 14, it's the 14th. Uh -huh. Three, one, four, it's the fourth. Uh -huh. There are different ways you can use. So all you need are the original numbers and then there are different ways you can combine those numbers so that students practice them. Because let's face it, even with three numbers, the ordinal number is just the last one. Even if you have three, eight, seven, well, it's 387th. That's the only thing that changes. Mm -hmm. So you can challenge your students with more and more numbers and they'll have fun. All they're doing is not thinking about the rule. They're just trying to make the ordinal number as fast as they can. Really, if, if you have students that are, are higher level, like you can see sometimes, because this is also, a, with numbers, there's also a bit of mathematical logic. So some students that are better at maths might get this faster and they'll have fun if you tell them, okay, now two cards, okay, now three cards. They can continue automating that whilst the maybe weaker students are still working with one card at a time. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's great to be able to, to, to give students that, uh, um, the, 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 those different levels. Yeah. As a kind of warm up also in the beginning. Yeah, P uh, I like P2 class. activities for warm ups. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, I think that was. Mm hmm. Those were all the new P2 activities I wanted to show you today. That's, I, I, I hope that's, that answers all the questions that I got last week for P2 activities. <clears throat> so next I wanted to show you some new things as well that we've been working on. Again, that's your feedback, your requests. So, I would, I would start with vocabulary. We've got some, uh, some requests for idioms, phrasal verbs, things like that. Um, so this would be uh, it's not in grammar, but in vocabulary. Wait, it's not easy on the tablet. Da, da, da. There we go, I'll deselect grammar. All right, there we go. So you see now I, I, I went out of grammar, I went into vocabulary. So you see, I've already shown you these activities, the emails P2, we talked about it before, card flip, or, ordinal numbers, we've just talked about it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to remind you, remember teaching tips, if you see anything called teaching tips, those are, that's a direct link to a video 
where we explain and we demonstrate how we would teach it, okay? But I wanted to show you these three first activities um, and get your feedback as well on them because we've started making some idioms activities. The question always with idioms and phrasal verbs is what are you supposed to teach according to the textbooks that, textbook that you have? Because whilst most vocabulary now is pretty much categorized by level, uh, you know, you know the, the, the uh, uh, institutions took dictionaries and paired them with the most used words in, the voc in uh, everyday language and things like that, and they made categories of level of vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Idioms and phrasal verbs are a bit more complicated because textbooks usually um, they have their own collections. Mm -hmm. Authors of textbooks have different priorities in terms of idioms and phrasal verbs. So if you do need specific activities for your textbooks for a specific list of idioms or phrasal verbs, please again, I, I say this and repeat this, you're getting better. You're, you're getting less shy at emailing me and, and telling me what you need. But I continue insisting so that you really never hesitate. If, if you know that next week you need to teach your students uh, 10 phrasal verbs and you know exactly which 10, send me an email, tell me which ones, and Tom and I will get working on an activity. Here I want to show you the first ones we've done. These are, so for example, we put the list of idioms that we, that you'll find in these activities. So for example, this one is called idioms one at B2 plus level. These activities include the following idioms, go down in flames, not playing with a full deck, when it rains it pours, bark up the wrong tree, bite off more that you can chew, cry over spilt milk, don't give up your day job, and the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. These are all useful idioms, honestly. We paired them together this way. We like it this way. You'll see because of the basic practice. But again, if you need different idioms, just let us know. Because what we've done with this, so first of all, I would show you the basic practice, of course. You have four pages of basic P1 type practice. So match the idioms to their definitions, for example. Mm -hmm. Fill in each blank with one word. Uh, situations and relevant idioms for that situations. So here you see it's more creative. <clears throat> in which of these situations can you use idioms? Think, think of situations in which each of these idioms is relevant. These are all P1s and you even have a writing task. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see uh, an activity uh, with idioms or phrasal verbs on our, uh, on our website, you'll see that a basic practice activity that is basically four or five different P1s that go up in difficulty so that the students practice the P1s in fill in the blank formats and things like that, writing essays, uh, writing emails, all right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Uh, it's very necessary to make them active. Yes, and uh, <laughs> that's why I'm interested in them. Because... Absolutely. So uh, let, let me finish. You see, there's the answer key as well. Just in case you have the answer key. Now, to make them active, you're absolutely right. Take a look. So I showed you practice activities. Next, there's the answer key. Next, you have instructions mm -hmm. for a guessing game because you have instructions, guessing game, track board, guessing game, and cards for the guessing game. Look, the track board is basically like a board game track. So the students start here, mm -hmm. and they need to race around the track and reach the finish line. Mm -hmm. Clear? Yes, that's quite clear. <laughs> and where are... How are they going to do that? The whole, the, the, the fun of their, their, the, the, <clears throat> how they're going to do that. Well, let me open the cards. You'll see directly. So look, for each idiom, we've prepared four different cards. 
One will have the correct definition and three have wrong definitions. Mm -hmm. There are different ways you can play this. The, 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 the first way is to give each groups in turns when it's your turn to play, you need to try to fool the others. Oh. So for example, you see this first one, go down in flames, the correct definition is to fail in a big way. Mm. But I'm going to think of three more definitions. So most typically, I should have another definition that is similar to the correct definition, but that is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I might say to fail in a small way. That's too, that's too close, I'll probably fail. I can, I can use a third definition. To get the pain, maybe. To, to be in pain, okay, to get in pain. <laughs> No, to get uh, the fame. To get famous. To get fame. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we have to fail in a big way. To fail in a small way. To get famous. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one, go down in flames, maybe to get pain. Maybe. And so, okay, so I have four definitions. To suffer it's from my turn. And I ask you each to vote on which definition is correct. If you all vote for the correct definition, I don't move. If one of you votes for the wrong definition, I can roll the dice one time. If two of you vote for the wrong definition, I can roll twice and so on. And this will make me advance, wait, wait, wait. And this will make me advance on the track board. So you see we're all at start. It's my turn, I go first. I give you my four definitions and two of you make a mistake. So I can roll the dice twice. I roll it once, three. Okay, one, two, three. I roll it a second time, five. So in total I get eight. Then it's the next student's turn and they get the second idiom. Mm -hmm. Clear? Clear. I find this it's 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 a <clears throat> I find this a very nice way to practice uh, uh, idioms or phrasal verbs because actually it it also plays on the students not only creativity but their their mastery of the English language because you it's very difficult to make up a fake definition. Mm -hmm. that is going to work if you don't have a bit of sense of the language. So, for example, you suggested to, to, uh, to get fame because flames uh, uh, can, can, can often be uh, uh, associated with that. You're on fire, you're, you're, you're great. Uh, the same thing with getting pain. So the students actually play with their knowledge, with their understanding of the English language. And that is what you need when you're at idioms and phrasal verb levels. They need to have fun with that. Yeah, I'm sure it can be really fun. It's a lot of fun. Fake definitions are a lot of fun, yes. As, as I said again, though, the more, the, more, the more we know which idioms, which phrasal verbs you need to practice, the better we can design activities for you. Because unfortunately, I, I, every time I take an, uh, open a new textbook, I'm surprised at the, 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 the phrasal verb list because it's not the same as another textbook. Yeah, but Anton, we have got quite a special maybe demands for Oge and Yigir, and uh, we have also phrasal verbs there, and okay. that's uh, the matter of concern. So you want specifically phrasal verbs that are on the official list of so yes, as well. I'm uh, more interested uh, in language for life, but we also need to think about exams. Okay, so you are asking you are asking for specifically phrasal verbs for exams. Yes, just to keep them in mind. All right, okay. all right. I'll talk to Tom about it tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay, that's you see that's great information for us uh -huh. because yes, it depends. I know that most of us teach in general for real life and we use different textbooks. Mm -hmm. So I was curious which phrasal verbs exactly you meant. 
I know, for example, one of the most typical collections of phrasal verbs uh, uh, at, at pre-intermediate level, I would say, are the relationship phrasal verbs. To get on with someone, uh, uh, to, to break up with someone, things like that. I, I know those come up a lot. Exam practice, gotcha. We'll take a look at that. And we'll continue making, thinking of other ways of uh, automating the vocabulary as well. All right, I'll reset the search because now I want to show you. You remember when we talked, I talked to, I showed you flowery language mm -hmm. and it's proven very popular. So we've been, we've been making more activities and, and now we designed one flowery language. Flowery language has three different components. It has uh, exaggeration with uh, uh, non-gradable adjectives, for example, furious, uh, it's boiling hot, things like that. Mm -hmm. Comparing to life experiences when you say, oh, I haven't laughed this hard since the last Mr. Bean movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. And flowery language, one aspect that I love about them are similes and metaphors. So we designed, upon popular request, we designed a specific activity for similes. So here again, it's a three page, uh, um, it's a three page P1. Okay. You have, you have a quick ex explanation. When you want to be more descriptive with your language, similes are a good way to go. When you hear simile, think similar. It's just a literally device that tends to follow one of these formulas. I felt like Joe was as, and all I have to do really at this stage is choose a noun that describes the appropriate intensity of the situation that you want to show. Uh -huh. So in, in, in this P1, I highly recommend doing similes and metaphors before flowery language, because in this one, we go more basic. Com you see exercise one, complete the similes by filling in the blanks with your own idea. Jerry's as strong as, Henrietta is hungry like, oof. What do you think, Henry Henrietta is hungry like? A wolf. A wolf. Like a horse. Like a horse? <laughs> You can you can add an adjective to the horse or to the wolf to make it even more telling. Henrietta is hungry like a wolf on a diet. Uh -huh. okay. Henrietta is hungry like a wolf during Lent. During Lent, you, you, you don't eat meat. Can you imagine a wolf during Lent? It, it, it adds a bit of fun. So you're absolutely right. They, they will start by using one noun and then you, you, you help them expand that because pretty typically they will go to the, the, most, um, the most common public, uh, the, the most common cultural references. So for example, hungry like a horse, hungry like a wolf. And then you have fun with them. You tell them, add something, make that wolf even particularly hungry. What do you think, number three? Look, George is as, as a lion. Uh, I don't know, strong. Strong, yeah. brave. brave, proud. You can have a lot of fun with that. Important. Important. Well, it depends, is the lion really important? All right, he's the king. Okay, if you take it like that, then yes. yes. You could also say that George is as lazy as a lion. Lazy? Well, come on, have you, have you not seen in documentaries? I mean, I like lions, I, I, I really do. They're beautiful animals, but let's, let's face it, the male does nothing. <laughs> the male basically spends his days sleeping and waiting for the females to hunt. So you could say George is as lazy as a lion. 
Okay. We'll take it into consideration. It's 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 good fun. Students are going to have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> so that's that's a, a P1 level activity. You see, there are three pages where. Their, their students can take their time playing with similes, things like that. And we've developed a P3 activity for the similes as well. We call it, guess what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. it's, it's good fun. It's, it's pretty straightforward. You, so you put the students into pairs and groups. Student A takes a card with an event or a situation on it. And A makes a simile to describe the event or situation without saying what it is. So the student cannot just read the card. The student should describe the card with similes and the partners should guess what the situation or the feeling is. You can make it into a competition. The first student that guesses gets the card. Mm -hmm. And look, these are the situation event cards. Drinking cold water on a hot day. How could you describe it using a simile? I felt, I felt <clears throat> thirsty. I, I felt thirsty, but uh, uh, remember the whole idea is to push them to, to, to really to paint a picture using their words. So like, I felt like, like a, a, an ice cream melting under the sun. Mm -hmm. I felt it was, it was, it was as, it was as refreshing as a Coke in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Actually, no, Coke is not really refreshing. You want to drink more after. It's so sweet that you, you need more. Yes. Winning the lottery. It's not really easy, yes? <laughs> it's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. We challenge our students. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Of how to describe or what? Yes, drinking cold water on a hot day. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe cold water. So it is when you are thirsty and uh, I don't know. And it's and you take uh, a glass of water with ice. How do you feel at that moment? I felt like a camel drinking cold water on a hot day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you said drinking cold water on a hot day. But yes, I like the camel yes. idea. Yeah. I felt I felt I felt like a camel with a treat. Yeah, um, as far as I understood, uh, we shouldn't um, use this word on the card. Yeah, we need to explain them. Exactly. Uh -huh, Using a simile. And I don't see, know. It pours in the middle of July. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It was in the middle of July, for example, and uh, I was walking somewhere uh, along the beach, for example. And, and uh, where's your simile? <laughs> simile? No. I felt like, try to finish, I felt like... I felt, I don't know, <laughs> like a person. <laughs> Drinking something refreshing. Look, cold water. I, I'm thinking icebergs. Icebergs. I'm thinking Titanic. Okay. I felt like the Titanic sinking uh, in the middle of a July, uh, in the middle of a hot, warm July summer's day. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It's it's right now. We're struggling because we didn't spend five ten minutes doing the P1s. Of course, the P1s prepare the student for this. But all of these cards you can describe using a simile, getting a computer virus. Uh, I felt I felt like uh, I, fe I felt like a worker being robbed of his tool. Mm -hmm. yes. That's true. Today I was supposed to give you your webinar on my laptop and it froze. I don't know what's up. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I can do my, my, I can support you the same way on this tablet. It's, it's a bit slower. It's, it, we figured it out is okay. But five, 10 minutes before the, the, the webinar, honestly, I was a bit panicked when this laptop froze like that. 
But yeah, I felt like a, a, a worker being robbed of his tools. So that's, that's the activity that we call, guess what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But you're absolutely right. It is, it's not something that is easy. You, you start with the basic practice. You need to start with the P1. The students would need to develop that. It's not something that you're going to develop in one lesson. But really like that, that is amazing speaking dexterity. Exactly. All right. The last thing is, yes, time is running. Mm -hmm. The last thing we talked. So you asked about P2 activities for present continuous for to be. We saw those. You asked for a lot of act automate activities for numbers and things like that. We saw those. Idioms, phrasal verbs. I showed you for now idioms. If you have more lists, please send me. We will continue making more idioms and phrasal verb lists. Uh, okay. Upon your recommendation, I'll think about it in terms of exam preparation. We talked about the similes and now, last little thing, we talked a lot, recently we've talked a lot about creativity and, uh, and writing. So I wanted to show you two things we've been developing for that, if you want to help your students. Develop that same beginning. Pretty sure that's what it was called. Okay, let's go to writing then. Give me a second. Uh, there we go. There we go. <clears throat> have I have I showed you before all these same beginning activities? Um. Look, we have a lot of writing activities actually. So here you see uh, you see the text messages. We've done that. I've shown you that before, right? If 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 not, if you're unsure about the text message, these text message activities are really the the beginning. To, to engage students to write. Boom, sorry. These are very simple writing practice activities where the students are just exchanging text messages. So you're, 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 you're leaving. Uh, yes, absolutely. You're, you're leaving. Um, you're not forcing the students a specific length. They have lots of fun with these little text messages because basically it's like a WhatsApp. I have lots of cake. You pass it on to the next person. The next oh. person answers. I am coming you pass to you. It back. I am coming to you. Sorry. If you have lots of cakes, I'm coming to you. Ah, exactly. And then I'll reply something like, uh, "Not right now. I'm in the middle of a webinar." Mm. We can do it later. Uh, later, all the cakes will be gone. Oh, send me some. To you. I'll save you something. I'll drop yes. you tomorrow. Exactly. It's, it's, it's very easy to do. And really, for kids, tweens, and teens, I found it's an ideal way to already get them to write. Mm -hmm. And then they cannot tell you when you give them a longer activity. They cannot tell you, oh, this is difficult. Oh, we don't know. No, because you've done this for a few weeks at the beginning of the year. Uh, I use these a lot in September, October, November. And then gradually, I'll start giving them emails, longer and longer things to do. And it doesn't seem like such a big deal. So we start with these text message activities. You'll find loads of them. But let me show you as well what I wanted to talk to you about. So lately, we've also been developing these activities. We call them same beginning. Mm -hmm. So these activities are meant to encourage creativity on the part of the students. Once they've done enough short writing and text messages, things like that, you start getting into more, uh, more direct exam preparation because 
I find honestly writing nowadays is mainly exam preparation. There, there's there's very little real life situations where 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 students actually are going to write 200, 250 words. They're going to have to in professional contexts in the future, most definitely, but in their immediate reality as teenagers, 200, 250 words, that's a lot to them. It's, it's kind of something, um, something they associate more to school. So the activity here is to encourage them to write two stories starting with the same beginning. Story one, it was a cold day, but I wasn't paying attention to that. And story two starts exactly, exactly the same way. It was a cold day, but I wasn't paying attention to that. I can tell you a little secret. I've, I've had a, a, a very interesting conversation. Uh, actually, it happened last week at the uh, uh, Nate Umbrella Conference in Nizhny Novgorod. Uh, there was there were a few teachers that I, I met there that already use those activities and they told me a nice little extension that you can bring if you want to challenge your students even more on their creativity uh -huh. is tell them that they have to have the same ending as well. Uh -huh. So they have the, the they have their beginning here. It was a cold day, but I wasn't paying attention to that. They write their first story and let's say the first story ends with and the cat walked out of the room. They need, to, they need to write story two with the same beginning and they need to end in the same way and the cat left the room. Mm -hmm. I think you know now, we find, Tom and I both find that challenging students is a great way to, to get the students to, 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 to reach what they can do. If, if we don't challenge them, if we're too, too nice to them all the time. Unfortunately, the students, they're not going to try to write those things. So text messages, same beginning. And as you can see here, there are a lot of short writing activities as well. These are emails, police statements, <clears throat> and you will see them at a lot of different levels, okay? I'm going down, I'm scrolling down. You already see B1, B2 level here. It goes down even, oh, I wanted to show you it. Well, there are even A2B1, for example. Short writing activity originally intended as a response to an email. Students respond to the following. Henry, I heard that you got into trouble with the police last weekend. What happened? Can I help you with anything? Best, Anna. <laughs> Dear Anna, thank you so much for offering all that help. I actually really do badly need your help. Blah, 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 best, Henry. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So these are, I, I highly recommend you, you surf through them because there are a lot, a lot of writing and speaking activities that you'll find here. You see mind readers, top bloggers. If you want, we can have uh, uh, a future webinar specifically on that? I think it would be interesting. Yeah? Okay. Writing activities. So I heard you about the Oge Yege phrasal verbs for exams. Olga, you're absolutely right to remind me a lot about infinitives and ing forms. Perfect. Are there any other specific requests, more activities, more materials that you do not have? I should have kept my scarf. How do you feel yourself? Better. <laughs> I don't look, I was, I was told, I was told uh, I, I don't look too bad today. I had a bit of a, a, a harsh throat for my presentations in Nizhny Novgorod, but apart from that, that was fine. It was mainly the 
It was one morning, the, uh, uh, I think you all know that uh, the university campus where we were giving the, uh, uh, the speeches and everything, um, it just the, the, the heating had broken that very morning. If, if, you see, if you see photos of one of the days, you'll see that we're, we're all sitting in our coats and everything in the uh, auditorium. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when, when, when it was my turn to speak, I wasn't going to make my speech wearing my coat, my scarf, and my hat and everything. So I took everything off. And I think, yeah, that didn't do me good. I'm sorry, Olga, you asked about infinitives and informs, and uh, how do you usually teach them? How have you taught them before? So actually, at first we practiced them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the usual, I don't know, procedure, uh, mm -hmm. and the gaps, uh, and, and it is also the matter of for, uh, mixing them up. Yes, for example, words like offer and suggest, uh, prepare, mm -hmm. so, and mm -hmm. uh, also we don't have enough time actually uh, for making them active, and uh, that is uh, the problem usually. Yes, we just mm -hmm. uh, get acquaintance with them, uh, practice them a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, after that, <laughs> yes, uh, it, it is the problem to uh, maybe uh, I don't know make them productive. Yeah, so to, to make, to not to leave them in a passive vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, I remember I was on a course this summer and my uh, group mate, uh, she had, so I, I was observing her and her topic was infinitive and e. And she, she was just perfect. I was so surprised. It was an awesome lesson. And okay. if you're interested, I can ask for her lesson plan from that time. But now I can just tell you that it was guided discovery. She used guided discovery and uh, it, it worked really great. And the students were very proud of themselves because they found out the rules. And of course we have just to, to learn this. Yeah, I understand what you are talking about that we usually just learn it by heart and very often they leave it as a passive vocabulary. And she made wonderful worksheets um, with a, a picture and uh, like phrase to be or not to be, to, well, to uh, present one more rule about it. So it was wonderful. If you're interested, I can just send, uh, f ask her and send to her lesson plan. Maybe it can help uh, yeah. until, until we, find something on the database. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Elena, with pleasure, I would be really happy and thankful to you. Yeah. So we're, uh -huh. Elena. We're talking, there, there are a lot of different topics here. Are, are we talking specifically about the verb patterns? Because I, I heard you mention to offer, to suggest, things like yes. that. It's yes. specifically that that you want to automate. Mm, or as yeah. Elena put it, the 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 the, the, the the more general rules on ing and infinitive. Uh, I thought she mentioned like patterns, like suggest uh, or offer or pretend or yes. Or yes. Is it right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so okay. Uh, we can start with this. Yeah, because I find I know there are some textbooks uh, that have some lessons that the some lessons are just in general about the ing form, for example. And it goes over all the different ways you can use the ing form. The ing form can be the subject of a sentence, things like that. That's all very heavy. And uh, I, I wouldn't recommend teaching that in that way. And what is the way that's why I'm asking for the advice? Yeah. Uh, so you're asking for, for both cases, yes? Verb patterns and if you just have a list, lesson on ing and infinitive forms. Yes? Okay, so let's start with uh, patterns at first, okay? Pa patterns, are, patterns are easy. We're going to pretty much follow the same uh, uh, automate uh, uh, strategies as, as always. Uh, just it depends, we, we need to know which patterns we need to prepare. So for example, reporting verbs all have a pattern and they're very common at intermediate, upper intermediate level. Mm -hmm. we, the students need those reporting verbs. If you, you mentioned exam preparation, 
they need them and yeah they need those to be uh, automatic yes at first students should just know how to um, make phrases with them and use them correctly and after that we can expand it somehow okay you you don't you don't have any lessons like that where it's just ing and infinitive in general, right? No, we use them. We practice, but yes. Uh, so it it is really interesting to know how to make it more lively. Mm -hmm. As to make it is more lively, as for me, I usually just do the same things which are in database, but just adapt them to my topic. It usually works. For example, recently I did the. Um, Mm, like with this thing like infinity and uh, um, ing, uh, we, we did kind of memo games, flip games, uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and some other things. Well, just in the same way that some of database activities work. So you just think what you're doing, whether you're checking, understanding, or automating, or you do something for production. You just uh, look at your aim and just adapt it and make it more lively. Uh, you just uh, try to look at the activities mentioned by Anton and just uh, put your uh, um, like words or grammar points uh -huh. in there. Yeah. I like them uh, myself, and uh, I was really, uh, I don't know, interested well, while my studying. Yes, and actually, uh, Elena, I would be really grateful for your uh, materials. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, can you I see I'm, Anna is as well? Uh -huh. we'll, we'll, okay. definitely, we'll definitely write that, uh, uh, we'll definitely talk about that next time. Okay. okay. Um, wait, we talked about writing activities as well. What is more urgent in your course programs? Like, I'm guessing these, these patterns are less urgent, or are they? Just for me to know what to, to prioritize, what to do, what to prioritize for next week. I have some questions, but I think I'll better send them. All right. All right, so I have more writing activities. There's this ing uh, infinitive patterns, phrasal verbs for Oge and Yege exams. Anything else? I think it's enough for... <laughs> for and as, as to patterns, uh, when I, when I uh, sent you the, the last questions to Tom for his previous webinar, it was a um, screenshot from a movers, uh, if I'm not mistaken, movers exam preparation. Do you remember the task where they also have to uh, fill in with the, well, I, if I'm not mistaken, they're kind of patterns, yes? So did he cover it or not? Because I haven't finished watching his webinar yet. It's a pretty long webinar, right? He went uh, I started it on the bus today. I haven't finished yet. I'll finish it in, in an hour. I can't, I can't tell you if he's covered that topic yet. I'll ask Okay. Him. So I'll check it out and ju just write to you uh, if you're... You... Exactly. Okay. Because, uh, yes, Tom got that question as well. So we're working on different things. Uh, mm -hmm. If, if I remember correctly, Tom didn't tackle that in the first webinar. His next webinar, he's going to record it uh, next Friday or this Friday. I'll have to check. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right. Any other requests for now? And as to requests, uh, can you remind what is uh, what is uh, like say Tom in charge for and so what kind of questions should we address to you and which ones to Tom? Oh, address everything to me. Address everything to me. Okay. I, I'm Tom's buffer. Okay. It'll be, it's, it's, it's simpler anyways. Uh, we decided on that just because it's simpler uh, for, for one person to be in charge of certain things. That way we, we were on the same page on everything. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you're asking now about requests, about uh, materials, you mean, right? Uh, yes, right now I'm just asking for, for my webinar. Mm -hmm. 
You have more questions for his uh, methodology webinars, yes? As for me, yes. You, you can tell me now or you can send to them to me by email? Uh, by email. All right, then, if, if there are no more requests for today, we're going to leave it at that. So, again, mm -hmm. sorry for the, 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 the delay moving it from Saturday to Sunday, Sunday to Monday. I hope that's the last time this week. Uh, this week we'll have my regular webinar, and Tom will be gathering questions. Uh, uh, I'll send you that. I'll send that to you by email tomorrow. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Take care. Have a yes. good Monday evening. Mm -hmm. Night. Sorry. Night already. Maybe maybe it's already for night. Some. Yes, for some of you. Uh-huh. All right. Talk to you later this week. Uh-huh. Yeah, goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.